Hello crafty friends! My name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the November 2022 sheet load printable. I hope you'll stick around, see how it was made, and get a few tips along the way about this unique sketch. Yesterday, I stopped by with the debut of the November 2022 sheet load of cards, showed you my first set, and told you how you could download the printable for free. If you haven't yet seen that video, I do have the debut linked in that description box below. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set, and don't forget that my team of collaborators will also be sharing their sets as well. If you want to see what they've made here on YouTube, you can click on the hashtag in the title. And if you want to see what they're making over on Instagram, I do have a link to that search in the description box. I know that everybody would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. I told you yesterday what makes the November 2022 sheet load of cards special, and that is it is a split panel card. So what we have done is we have cut a section out of the front of the card base and then the bottom of the card front gets held on by these other pieces. Now this is going to require some special cutting and special putting together. So that's why I'm here today is to show you how to do these and give you some tips and alternatives along the way. I do also have some special notes throughout the printable to help you get started as well. I did discuss the main products in yesterday's video, so if you want more details on those, make sure to check that video out. But as I go along today, I will tell you about the products and tools I bring in. If I do leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started today by showing you how to cut your three pieces of pattern paper. Because mine does have the branding strip on the bottom, I'll need to cut that off first. Once that is off there, I'm going to turn my paper so it's reading the correct way in case it does have a pattern that only has one direction. And I'm going to cut two strips that are four inches wide and then two strips that are two inches wide. Now because this does add up to 12, you'll want to make sure you don't do what I call a generous cut. Do cut it right at the dimension given so you have room for all of your strips across that piece. Next, I'm going to take those four inch wide strips and cut them into three pieces that are one and a quarter inch tall and three pieces that are two and a half inches tall. Now on this first strip, I got a little bit cut happy with the one and a quarter and I did end up cutting four of those and it took me a minute to get my wits about me and I'm like you know what I'll just cut another one at one and a quarter and put those two together for the two and a half which I, if I would have had more time to think about it I probably would have just cut the remaining pieces out of the next four inch wide strip but you know what it all worked out and I can barely tell where I pieced those two together. And I do show on the next 4 inch strip how to cut that piece correctly. If you cut your papers like I did mine, there will be a couple little scraps left over. You could always add those to the insides of the cards if you wanted. Next, I'm going to take the 2 inch wide strips and cut them each into 3 pieces that are 4 inches tall. Now once again, because it does add up to 12, make sure not to use those generous cuts. Then I cut those remaining two pieces of pattern paper the same way, just making sure not to cut the extra one and a quarter inch tall pieces. Once all of the pattern papers were cut, I brought in cardstock for CS1, which was two sheets and a scrap of ivory. I need to end up with 18 total pieces that are two and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna start by cutting my two full sheets of cardstock in half at four and a quarter by 11. Then I take the four and a quarter inch strips, rotate them, and I cut them into as many pieces as I can get that are two and a quarter inches wide. 
There are some pieces at the end left over and I end up using those later for my sentiments. While I continue to cut CS1, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with a special congratulations. The channel members that are scrolling up on screen now celebrated one year of membership in October. I would like to say thank you to each and every one of them for their continued support. You keep me here crafting on YouTube and sheetload of cards free for all. If you are ever interested in learning more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. The sketch calls for a circle that is approximately two and a quarter inches, and I just wanted to show you that if you do print out your sheet load of cards at 100%, you can actually bring your dies to the piece of paper to see which ones might fit best. For my CS2 circles, I will be using that same ivory cardstock, and I took my full sheet and my scrap off screen and die cut 18 of those circles. Now I'm going to show you how to make those split panel card bases. I do have some extra instructions on the printable, but sometimes it's nice to see it in person. To get started, it's going to be like a regular top fold card. I'm going to cut each piece of the ivory cardstock in half at four and a quarter inches wide. The next step is to get these folded in half. Now you could definitely just do this by hand, but I did bring in my score buddy. I put a score line at five and a half inches, and then once all of those were done, I folded them in half and reinforced the fold with my bone folder. I just think this gives it a nicer, crisp look for the finished cards. To finish off those split panel card bases, we need to do some cutting. And what we're going to do is cut a section off the bottom that is two and three quarters inch, and then cut another section that is one and a quarter inch tall. Now, don't forget, you don't have to memorize these dimensions because they are on the printable. Now, the two and three quarter inch piece, you are going to want to keep that because that's the bottom part of your card when finished. The next section, which was at one and a quarter, hang on to this later for another project. Unfortunately, today my sentiment was a little bit too tall, otherwise, I could have used it for that. I cut the remaining card bases exactly like this until all 18 were cut, and then it was time to move on to some matting. We're going to get started with the matting by using the two and three quarter inch piece we just cut off our card base and pattern paper piece C. For me, I just adhere these flat down with ATG to the center of the ivory mat. And while I continue to work on this, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. These are just fun little questions that we can get to know each other a little bit better. Today I would like to know, have you ever made a split panel card before? Let me know in that comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. For myself, I have made a handful of split panel cards in the past. I've always enjoyed them when I make them, but I don't do it often enough. So that's why I thought having this sheet load would be just a fun little alternative way to make cards. Next, we're going to be adhering pattern paper piece A onto that top little one and a half inch flap of the card base. Now try your best to center the piece of pattern paper in that one and a half inch little section. I do find it was easier to go ahead and open up my card base and lay it flat. And then you can still see where that fold or that score line was at. You'll want to make sure as you're adhering those that if you do rotate your card base or open it up, you will want to make sure you know how the card's going to read later so your pattern isn't going in a wonky direction. 
And finally, for the matting, we're going to be putting together pattern paper piece B with the CS1 pieces that we cut. Once again, I just used my ATG and I adhered each of these flat in the center of the mat. Once everything was matted, it was time to make the card kits, and this is what I just call putting together the pieces for each of the cards. This helps me in the end avoid any cards having the same pattern in two different spots. Now I will be doing three of each arrangement. So here on the first one, I grab the acorn top, the wood grain left, and the plaid bottom, and I'm going to do two more like that. Then for the final three that use the acorn topper, I'm going to grab the plaid left and the wood grain bottom. This allows you, like if you're going to give these cards as a gift altogether, just for a little wider variety in the looks of your cards. I did just slip each of the pieces for the card into that top fold, and I am going to let you watch as I put the remaining kits together in case you want to slow this down and put yours together at the same time. Now it's time to get those card bases put together. I'm going to bring in one of my little card bases, and at this point you could bring in the printable to help you figure out where exactly you want the strip on the left to go. I am going to try to go per the printable, and it's a little bit further down on the wood grain paper than centered. To adhere the acorn piece, I put a couple strips of adhesive right at the top of that, and then I pressed it down onto the wood grain paper. Now to get the bottom piece on there, you'll want to align it with the bottom of the back of your card and then figure out how far down the adhesive can go. I just added a little mark with my fingernail, flipped that top part back up, added a few strips of adhesive, and then pressed it down while I was still holding the plaid in place. Now as you go along you can continue this same way marking it each time but for me once I figured out kind of how far I could go I added that bottom piece at the end and if I happen to have any adhesive showing on the back of my left strip I just wiped it off with my finger. You definitely don't want your cards sticking together. You might have noticed that I showed you the first card how it would stand up, but I did have to reinforce that fold with my fingernails to make sure that it stood up nice and straight. So just keep that in mind that with all of the opening and closing of these card fronts to adhere the pieces together, you might just want to go ahead and reinforce each of those folds. For my sentiments today, I will be using the circle we cut earlier, but I'm going to have part of my sentiment pop up off that circle. So I brought in this Hello Stamp and die, and I took the die off screen with some ivory scraps, and I cut out 18 of those. I did make sure to keep the negative for one of the die cuts, because I will be using that to help me stamp the hello exactly where I need them. I set up the stamp just anywhere on my misty there, and then I used some removable tape to help hold the negative piece in place. Then I can insert one of the Hello die cuts, ink up my stamp, and it will stamp nice and centered on there. Now I did go ahead and ink up the stamp twice to get a nice solid teal, and then I could just pop that Hello out of there and put the next one in place and keep stamping. This is one of the awesome things about the Misty. Once all of the hellos had been stamped, it was time to stamp the rest of my sentiment, and that is just the word friend. I will be stamping this onto the die cut circle, and again I used my Misty so I could place one of the die cut hellos down and then figure out where my friend stamp could go. 
Now here I brought in a piece of clear cardstock that I keep with my Misty so I could do a little test stamp. This allows me to see the circle below it and then still test it out with the hello. Now I was lucky and got it pretty much right the first time, so I removed that clear piece of cardstock and then stamped all 18 of my circles. The next step is to get the circles added to the card fronts. Not only does this add more decoration, but it does help adhere all the pieces together so the card base is more sturdy. Before you add any adhesive to the circle, you will want to figure out where on your card base you want it to go. And then I discovered for me, that would mean I would put adhesive on the back of the left half and on the bottom half. So I turned my circle over, I added some adhesive, and then I got my piece in place on my card front. Now at this point, if you want to open it up and see if any adhesive is exposed, you could wipe it away then if you're using a liquid or a tape runner. I continued adding circles until all 18 card fronts had one, and then it was time to finish off my sentiment. To do this, I brought back in my Hello die cuts, and I did want to add a little dimension at this point, so I'm going to be adding some foam tape to the back of each Hello. I am using my 3 8 inch and quarter inch wide big blue rolls of foam tape. I'll show you here how I added one and the rest I actually had done off screen. One thing I like about the foam tape rolls that I buy is as long as you burnish that blue release paper on the back, it does come off pretty easily. So after I had removed the release tape, I place it onto my circle and here's a look at one of those finished. I just love the little extra dimension it gives to the cards. And once again, I finished all 18 of these. At this point, you could definitely call it a day and leave the cards as is, but I decided to add a little bit of sparkle and some bling, and I brought in some gold half pearls. I added three around the sentiment in a triangle shape. I just thought this added a nice touch, and because the hello was popped up, these didn't add any more dimension to the card. I finished all of those, and here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first November 2022 sheet load of cards and got a few tips along the way. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit all of my collaborators by either using the hashtag in the title or the links in the description box. Until my next one, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.